In this video, we'll be looking at the definition of acid, base, alkali, and also the basicity of acids. So stay tuned. First, let's look at acids. There are a few theories on what an acid is, and in this video, we're going to be looking at the Arrhenius theory. So according to Arrhenius theory, an acid is a chemical substance that dissociates to form H plus ions. When we add an acid to water, it ionizes or dissociates, and H plus ions are formed. So this is how it happens. Hx is the acid. When we put it into water, H plus ions are formed, and then we have an anion as well. For example, hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is HCl. When we put hydrochloric acid in water, when we dissolve it in water, HCl will dissociate to form H plus ions as well as chloride ions. So the key here is the H plus ions. Normally, we write H plus ions as H plus. However, in the real scenario, H plus ion doesn't exist by itself. It will combine with water to form the hydroxonium ion. This is through dative bonding. The video on dative bonding is at the corner. So normally, hydrogen ion is formed, then it immediately combines with water. So the full equation is actually HCl plus water becomes hydroxonium ion plus chloride ion. However, in order to simplify matters, in order for us to look at equations simply, we normally ignore the hydroxonium ion. We don't write hydroxonium ion and we don't write water on the left. So normally, this is what is written. HCl plus H plus ion plus chloride ion. These are examples of other acids. This is nitric acid, HNO3. So this will dissociate in water or ionize in water to form H plus ions, hydrogen ions, and nitrate ions. Sulfuric acid is another kind of acid. It dissociates in water to form H plus ions and sulfate ions. The basicity of an acid is the number of hydrogen ions released when one molecule of the acid dissociates or ionizes in water. Basicity of acid has nothing to do with bases. It's two completely different things. Basicity of acid is when we have one molecule of the acid and we dissolve it in water and we have to see how many hydrogen ions are released by this one acid molecule, a single molecule. Let's look at an example. So for nitric acid, when nitric acid is dissolved in water, it will become nitrate ion and hydrogen ion. Nitric acid has only one hydrogen ion. When it dissociates in water, only one hydrogen ion is released. Same with hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid only has one hydrogen ion. When hydrochloric acid is dissolved in water, only one hydrogen ion is released per molecule. So we look at a single molecule. And in this case, where only one hydrogen ion is released by one molecule of the acid, this acid is said to be monoprotic or monobasic. Mono signifies one, single. Let's look at sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid has two hydrogen ions, and when dissolved in water, sulfuric acid will release two hydrogen ions and sulfate ion. So we are not concerned with the anion, we are concerned with how many hydrogen ions are released by a single molecule of the acid. So since two hydrogen ions are released, sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid or dibasic acid. Basicity, so basic. Another term for it is protic. So diprotic means di for two. Diprotic so it releases two hydrogen ions. Then we have triprotic. Tri is a prefix for three. Here, phosphoric acid has three hydrogen ions. When it dissolves in water, phosphoric acid has three hydrogen atoms. When dissolved in water, phosphoric acid will release three hydrogen ions. And therefore, it is known as a triprotic acid or tribasic acid. This is the basicity of acids. Let's look at ethanoic acid. It is important to note that not all hydrogen atoms will be released when the acid is dissolved in water. We have to see how many hydrogen atoms are released when the acid is dissolved in water. So in the case of ethanoic acid, 
Ethanoic acid has four hydrogen atoms. However, when dissolved in water, only one hydrogen atom becomes hydrogen ion. The other three remain as part of the anion. It is not ionized in water. And therefore, ethanoic acid is a monoprotic acid because it only releases one hydrogen ion when dissolved in water. One molecule of ethanoic acid, one hydrogen ion. Base is a substance that, when reacts with acid, only forms salt and water. A base is a chemical substance that reacts with acid to form salt and water only. No other products should be formed. For example, magnesium oxide. Normally, metal oxides are considered bases and metal hydroxides. But we will cover metal hydroxides next. Let's take a look at metal oxides. This is magnesium oxide. Magnesium oxide is a metal oxide. When magnesium oxide reacts with acid, here we have hydrochloric acid, we have magnesium chloride, which is a salt, and water only. There are no other products that are formed here. Therefore, magnesium oxide is a base. Let's look at copper 2 oxide. Same case, copper 2 oxide reacts with sulfuric acid this time. Doesn't matter what acid. And to form copper 2 sulfate. Copper 2 sulfate is a salt and water only. There are no other products formed. So any substance that reacts with acid to form salt and water only is known as a base. Alkali. All alkalis are bases. Let's think about this. All alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. Why? Alkalis are bases that are soluble in water. It's as simple as that. So we have acid and base. We don't have acid, base and alkali separately. We only have acid and base. But bases that are soluble in water are known as alkalis. So the examples of alkalis are our metal hydroxides. Metal oxides are bases in the solid form. When we dissolve in water and we get metal hydroxide, then metal hydroxides are alkalis. They are still bases, but now they are known as alkalis. So alkali is a chemical substance that ionizes in water, similar to acid, but this time instead of H plus ions, it forms OH minus ions. This is also in accordance with Arrhenius theory. So this is an example. We have XOH. When we dissolve in water, we get X plus and more importantly, OH minus ions, hydroxide ions. Example, sodium hydroxide. When sodium hydroxide is dissolved in water, we get Na plus and OH minus. This is another example. This is ammonia, NH3. When we dissolve ammonia in water, aqueous ammonia, we get ammonium ion, NH4 plus and OH minus. This is again by dative bonding. If you haven't seen the video on dative bonding, the link is at the corner. So let's look at the reaction of alkalis as bases. We have sodium hydroxide here, which is an alkali. With acid, we get sodium chloride, which is a salt, and water. So the products here are salt and water only. So when something reacts with acid to form salt and water only, that is the definition for a base. So we can see here that sodium hydroxide is indeed a base. But since it is soluble in water, it is an alkali. This is another example, potassium hydroxide. Potassium hydroxide, a metal hydroxide, is also an alkali, but since it's an alkali, it is definitely a base. Let's look at the reaction here. Potassium hydroxide reacting with nitric acid this time. We get potassium nitrate, which is a salt and water. So when we have a reaction of a substance with acid that produces salt and water only, it is a base. So all alkalis are bases, but not all bases are alkalis. That's it for this video guys. If you've learned something, please hit the like button. It really does support me. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. I will be posting at least one video a week. I'll see you in the next video.